So there's a little bit of a language problem between the world of neuroscientists on the one hand and the world of mystics um, and then on the other hand. So in the world of neuroscience, uh, what we call conscious awareness is the experience of brushing my teeth this morning, the experience of talking with you, the experience of putting my hands together, the sound that my rings make when they go click. Um, these are all conscious experiences. It's, in other words, for a neuroscientist, consciousness is what you lose when you go into deep sleep or what you lose when you have general anesthetic. Okay. Unconsciousness or non-conscious processes, um, most neuroscientists would rather use non-conscious processes because unconsciousness makes us think of Freud and neuroscientists don't like to think about their unfulfilled desires. So non-conscious processes um, is the preferred term. So non-conscious processes are anything that we're not conscious of. So that's the process that keeps me breathing as I talk with you. It's the process that controls exactly where to put my hands in space, where to put my tongue in my mouth to make the words that I want to make. I have no awareness of those processes. I'm grateful that they work. Uh, so those are the non-conscious processes. Okay. Okay, now switch over to mysticism, um, or more recent, maybe new age mysticism that builds on Hinduism and Buddhism. You have this idea of consciousness being this infinite field, this way that um, people can transcend their individuality and become uh, essentially unified with uh, both other people and everything, everything, the cosmos, so everything, right? It's a very different idea. It's fundamental to a mystic, so it has nothing to do with this thing that goes away when you fall asleep, right? Because it's fundamental, it wouldn't go away ever. It's always there. Um, and to most mystics, or most uh, meditators anyway, Unconsciousness is the, things that, is the thing that most people are in when they walk around during the day. They're unconscious. They're not conscious of what's really going on. They're not conscious of what's underneath the surface. So you have the exact opposite definitions <laughs> from these two groups of people, which is a problem in some cases, and it's a good thing in other cases. So it's a, it's a problem in that any kind of communication between the communities is rough. So when I first heard people in the mystical world talk about consciousness as this infinite field, I was like, I don't know what to say to that because I go to sleep. And don't, do you, don't you have the experience of not being conscious when you're asleep? I don't know what you're talking about. And then I realized that, that they were exactly applying the opposite label. Um, so that's the bad situation is this confusion. And it makes um, neuroscientists think that mystics are nuts, okay? and probably makes mystics think that neuroscientists are stupid, right? I'm sure that that goes both ways. Um, the good side, at least in my opinion, is that you have this confusion that's enough so that neuroscientists will actually talk to mystics because mystics will say, well, I'm trying to understand consciousness and the neuroscientists will say, oh yeah, me too, what a mystery. And they're talking about two different things, but they'll actually start talking to each other. So there's, there's good and bad parts of that. Um, I think that we need to go to the roots to solve this dilemma, to go to the roots, um, not of physics, because every time neuroscientists and experimental psychologists interact with physicists, we say, well, you don't understand how complex this is. You have your simple systems that seem complex to you, but this is a really complex system. So kind of ignore physicists. Um, but we need to go back to the roots of experimental psychology and neuroscience. So William James, um, who's a wonderful neuroscientist and experimental psychologist, and he said, look, you have trees, um, their roots connect, they commingle underneath the earth, and at the top, they're separate. And so our, ex our conscious experiences of being separate and our unconscious, he calls it because he's an experimental psychologist, of, is of being uh, connected. And both of those things are true and it depends on perspective. And I think that's the closest we can get to any kind of understanding between those two communities.